Today, Case and I are out here in Plano, Texas, taking a detailed look at the new Toyota Crown Signia, one of the more unique vehicles on sale today, because Case, the question is, is this a station wagon or is this an SUV? Yeah, it's a mix of a few different things. It is an interesting size and it's also a hybrid vehicle. It's all wheel drive. It rides definitely a little bit taller than a traditional station wagon, but I wouldn't say it's quite tall enough to be a crossover. Interesting, yeah, and I think Toyota would probably market this as a crossover because that's what folks are interested in buying today. And it's not a low car to the ground. It's got a pretty high entry and exit point, but this car is interesting because it kind of fills a gap left by the Venza. And that gap was the ultimate budget Lexus. So this car starts about $44,000 in limited form. It's 49.3, so around $50,000, but some of the luxury appointments in here are definitely more in line with the Lexus brand. It definitely seems like a good value proposition car, not that $44,000 is a cheap entry point, but this car does have quite a few premium features that make it feel like it's maybe worth some of the money. So the Crown brand is an interesting story. This is the brand that launched in the US many, many, many decades ago and then left, but this was kind of the upper end of the Toyota sedan lineup. Abroad, they've continued selling Crowns successfully for a lot of years, and then recently, Case, they launched the Crown back to the US as kind of a lifted sedan, and the Signia continues that with a station wagon slash SUV variant. Yeah, and this does overall have very different styling from the more standard crown, the non-Signia version of it. Now let's talk about some of that design because there's a lot of interesting things going on here. First of all, we've got our daytime running light up here on the top portion of the bumper, but yeah, the like main, yeah, the main headlight beam is actually going to be down here. And I really like all the body color accents in this bronze spec. So there's not a lot to talk about in terms of grill on this vehicle, that old kind of Lexus Ma that they used to have has been nicely hidden by the body color accents. And overall, it's a very attractive design. This is kind of funky. This is not a huge panel gap up here. This is actually a little bit of black trim to kind of differentiate the front end from the hood, which looks pretty cool. And what about the wheels case? 21s, right? Yeah, good size wheel matches well with the accent color that's along the bottom of the car. And this is a pretty interesting color that this car is, it's kind of a bronze. Yeah, really fantastic. I'm gonna get the exact code here because I don't want to say it wrong. The yeah. color is Bronze Age, which is really a unique spec. And then I like this too, they got that floating roof with this little black piece of trim here on the, uh, the, the rear portion of the corner panel. And then you've got the bright colored roof rails along with the belt line accents. And then out back, that kind of Toyota staple now is that light bar that extends the width of the car and then crown spelled out in large letters. So overall a pretty decent looking car. Let's pop the trunk because of course storage is a big deal in this category. Yeah, and there is quite a bit of space in the back of this car. You can see both of our camera bags are slid forward to the front and there's still plenty of room left over. We're looking at somewhere around 25 cubic feet worth of space back there, yeah. which is really a lot of room. Um, and then fold the seats down and that's gonna extend that up to 66 cubic feet. So pretty decent size entry, not a super high lift over as well because the car is not super tall. And if we look underneath the floor, we've got a little bit of additional storage. There's our front license plate bracket. And then our battery is mounted in the back as well, our low voltage system. Now, speaking of the powertrain case, Crown Signia standard as a hybrid. Yeah, so there's three electric motors in addition to a 2.5 liter four cylinder, 243 horsepower, and these cars are all wheel drive, which especially if you live in a potentially snowy climate like we do in Colorado is a nice thing to have. And they are all all wheel drive. So standard all wheel drive in this vehicle, pop the hood there, transversely mounted four cylinder with our orange high voltage cables. So the way that they accomplish all wheel drive is a Toyota Lexus staple. There is no drive shaft from the front to the rear. Instead, there's a separate motor in the back that is in charge of operating the rear wheels. Front wheels are operated by that gas electric combo. Yeah, and then for a transmission, it's an ECVT. Yeah, so not a belt, electronically continuously variable, planetary gear set kind of deal. Let's check out the rear space. This is my driving position at six feet tall. Yeah, really not bad. So headroom, even with the full panel sunroof, starting to be a little bit compromised, but not to the point where it's gonna be 
a problem. Legroom is very good. We do have outboard rear heated seats on this limited trim. A couple set of vents, which is great for your furry friends. A couple of USB-C ports. Interestingly enough, still a pretty big hump, which is a little off-putting because this car does have that rear motor. I don't know why you need such a big hump there, Case. Yeah, there's not a transmission or drive shaft going to the rear. And then we have, I believe, an 11 speaker JBL audio system in this limited spec. So you can see that JBL branding there alongside. Yeah, as well as the button for your heated seat. So that's kind of getting into a little bit of the value that this car is trying to offer yep. with having quite a few features like heated rear seats. Stepping into the front, you can see we have heated and ventilated seats up here. Yeah, right. So pretty, pretty luxurious interior. We're gonna pop open that full pan or moonroof. So it is interesting, the front section immediately over us is pretty short. Yeah, really stubby actually. I think we've got a little bit of um, vehicle bracing here. So it does cut down a little bit on the full panoramic sunroof experience. So my favorite part about this interior is those kind of bronze accents actually make their way inside. Maybe this is more of a gold, wouldn't you say, Case? Yeah, it is, but it's a cool color. Even this door handle kind of matches, maybe a little bit darker. But it is, it's an overall pretty sharp interior. I wouldn't hate if this interior had a little bit more color to it. Uh, but a lot of your dash is dominated by these two screens, which are very sharp, good size. They're pretty nice. You've got your volume button here, and this would drive my OCD a little crazy. <laughs> Having the logo not point up right all the time. Yeah. <laughs> That's funny. Um, latest and greatest Toyota infotainment system, similar to what you find in everything from the Tacoma to the Tundra to the Camry. Works well, pretty snappy, lots of really cool information too. Being a hybrid, you can see the energy flow, where the battery is at in terms of um, state of charge, which is pretty cool. Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, XM Radio, it's got all the standards in here. User profiles as well, which you can uh, activate and use. And this then- is, This is kind of funky. So yeah. this is your wireless charger, but instead of being flat like it is in most cars, it's upright. It stands upright, goes way down there too. Yeah. So wireless charging active there, you can oh, see that on. kicks on into life. A um, couple of cup holders, this front one has a little divider, so if you don't need two in the front, you can turn that into a larger cubby. USB-C ports located front and center. This is interesting, I'm glad this panel is not piano black. Instead, it's, yeah, it's like, a, it's like, it's like a, a gray. Trombone gray. Trombone um, gray? Trombone gray. Color? Uh, our drive selector here, sport mode, drive modes as well. We got custom, normal, sport, and eco. They'll change your throttle response, some uh, mapping and some programming. And then EV mode. Now the EV mode's a little bit confusing because this car can't go in extended range on electrification. Um, for example, right now, it won't let me go into it. It says hybrid battery low. So this is not intended to be any kind of substantial driving, but if you wanted to like sneak out of a garage or neighborhood. Yeah, as if this car is very loud. Yeah, exactly. Pop this open. Um, you got that side fold there for the center console, and I think... Oh yeah, it's open It's folding Yeah, it's pretty cool. Can you open it backwards? No, you can only do one at a time, that's good. Um, and then Toyota safety system as well, safety sense, adaptive cruise control, lane centering, blind spot monitoring, all that incorporated, fully digital gauge cluster, a little bit configurable too. You can kind of change some of the information that it displays on either side. So look, very nice interior, comfortable, full of tech, ventilated seats, automatic heated steering wheel as well. You can set it to auto to come on if you want it to. And then I like that we still retain some physical controls for climate control. Yeah, it is. It's it's an overall nice car. It gives you all the features that you would expect from something, especially in this price category. I don't think there feels to me like there's any glaring omissions as far as features and content on this car. But uh, I don't know. What do you think as far as driving? Well, let's find out. So this car is very Lexus-like in its, in its whole vibe, its whole aura, just like the outgoing Benza was. Toyota has always had like a certain number of products that felt like they shot above their class, right? So I'm talking about like the old Avalon, the current Toyota Crown, right? These are vehicles that easily could have been Lexuses with a Toyota badge on it and typically was a little bit more affordable than an equivalent Lexus. So really like, in my mind, the biggest competition to this car is the Lexus RX. It's a very similar feeling, it's a sort of similar size and um, pretty good economy too. We're looking at, I think, 38 MPG combined with this standard all-wheel drive system. Look, Case, this is not what I would call a dynamic user experience. 
No part of this makes me want to go out and to rush out and get one. Hit the limit. No, no. I mean, I think it's a it's a great car, but from a driving experience, this is not something I would want to um, take on a twisty road, right, on a regular basis. Yeah. It is a it's a mild car to drive for sure. But having said that, 243 horsepower, pretty good power. Right, like it'll it'll give you a nice little push. It's very front wheel drive biased from the driving experience because I think the majority of the power is coming from that front end that has that access to the gasoline engine. But uh, the best part is it's a really good cruiser. So the ride is soft. Um, I don't think it has any like dynamic fancy suspension stuff. It just is a solid steel sprung vehicle that you just cruise along at and it's nice and quiet. This is a very refined experience. The CVT. ECVT, I should say, does get a little buzzy when you're really on the limit, right? So if you're trying to merge quickly, you are going to get some drone out of that four cylinder. But yeah. having said that, um, once you are up to speed, it completely just falls away and you don't hear that gasoline engine at all. Yeah. yeah. So what do you think people would most likely be cross shopping this car with? Which is kind of a tough question because it's, it is in a strange kind of in between. Yeah, I mean, it's interesting because it's not really like a CRV or a Sportage yeah, or a no. Tucson competitor. It's not really like a Santa Fe um, competitor from like Hyundai. It's, it's, it, it, this, is, this feels like a premium car. Like if I got rid of that Toyota badge, you, you wouldn't be surprised if this was an Acura or an Infiniti. So it almost kind of shoots above its class in that standpoint. It's also pretty expensive, right? This vehicle yeah. is going to be low $50,000 range. So it's not a super affordable car. No. And especially too, uh, if you're comparing this against luxury vehicles, I would say that this interior lacks some of the excitement, some of the sexiness that you might get in some other luxury brands. Mm -hmm. I, I do like this little bit of copper, whatever you want to call the color of this trim, that helps. But yeah, a lot of it is, is just kind of dark and there's still some hard plastics in sure. it. So, you know, I, I wouldn't call it the most high end of interiors. No, I, I think that's a fair critique. I, I think that a lot of folks would agree with you. Um, but I think that the driving experience is pretty premium. Like I've driven plenty of RXs. And for the most part, they, they really do drive just like this, right? Yeah. It's a, it's a very similar experience. Oh, man, where am I off to here, Case? Yeah, we're getting on some random we're Texas highway. Getting on some monster Texas highway. Uh, <laughs> Toyota and Lexus flew us out here to check out some of their products. This is not sponsored, though, in any way. No. All right, merging on the highway here. Let's see what the higher speed is like. Steering is completely numb. Brakes are fine. Um, guys, this is not a... It's not an enthusiast car. No, it certainly not. But if you wanted like an alternative to um, something, I, <laughs> yeah, what is what is the what is the comp competitor yeah, set yeah. here? Oh, it's a good question. Maybe if people can think of good competition vehicles to compare this against, uh, it's not... let us know in the comments. Because yeah, it is. Especially once you once you're standing next to it and you see the actual dimensions of this car. Uh, that gives you more of a feel than looking at pictures yeah. about just how in between it is. We're, we're really not sure whether we want to call it a station wagon or a crossover. I mean, the thing I can, the shape I could compare it most to is the Buick Regal Tour X. Yeah. You remember yeah. that thing? Actually, it's yeah. like, kind of like a lifted wagon. Yeah. Or maybe like a cross country Volvo, right? Right. Or an all road Audi, where they were kind of started life out as a wagon and then they jacked them up a little bit. And now yeah. they got some, uh, they got some height to them, but it's it's not like a conventional SUV in that like even you wouldn't want to take this on like a mile trail, right? No, you no, might want to no. take a Rav4 or something. But it's uh, it's a good car, right? I think that this is going to appeal to a lot of folks. A little bit of higher ride height, a lot of interior space, and an overall just very comfortable and precise driving experience. Yeah, it's almost size-wise like an Outback. Almost. Sure, but, yeah. I mean, but very much nicer than an Outback. Yeah, I mean, I keep forgetting I'm in a Toyota product, right? And I think that's a compliment to the car. But, I mean, I really think that this thing would make a lot more sense as a Lexus, right? Because yeah. I do potentially see a lot of cross shot between this and an RX or this and an NX, right? Or this and an RDX. Yeah, I think, I think it still is a step below Lexus in some of the fit and finish. 
Uh, but not so much in terms of features. I think the car has all the features that you would want. A lot of cool stuff in here, yeah. So. Well, folks, let us know what you think of the Toyota Crown Signia. Kind of an interesting name. Um, no, yeah, it's not Insignia. It's no, Signia. just Signia, period, yeah. yeah. And if you want to find more of us, check out alltfl.com. And if you want to check out less of us, head over to Alex and Autos. <laughs> um, but as always, this has been Tommy. And Case. We'll see you next time.